Okay, it's time to start the lightning talks. Uh, this will be a series of very cr short, brief talks uh, on various topics in order to relax you during the uh, lunchtime. I will be your first uh, speaker. How many of you guys are using Scrum in their daily use uh, of the software development process? Ah, lots of you guys. Uh, okay, hi. My name is Matt and I'm a developer advocate for Polish government and I work with pretty serious projects and I teach and learn uh, teach uh, the others how to communicate, how to work in Agile, how to work in Scrum. Okay, let's start. Uh, I had some experience with Scrum previously in my, former co uh, in my former company. However, I've seen that Scrum has become one of the most widespread uh, software development process out there. Scrum has become de facto the standard in the IT industry as a developer process that results delivering a uh, product to the audience. The next one is around one third of the per uh, percentage on the market share uh, of the software and development processes and that is a scrum combined with exp extreme program programming. Look how big impact on the market scrum has become and has made during the whole life cycle. But today my talk will be, uh, my brief talk will be considered uh, as a pointing out some various mistakes that we developers, and I, I was a developer for several years, uh, we developers are tend to make in order to, uh, in our process of creation and software de uh, development. The first one is Scrum Bot. This is the name of the talk uh, and this is, this is very popular phrase on the internet. It's, we use Scrum, but we don't have dailies. We don't have, and there's a list of things that we lack in the perfect, uh, perfect implementation of the Scrum. Scrum has been founded by guys who has 40 years of experience in software development. Scrum has be, become uh, a major, has played major role in software development within the largest companies out there. However, we tend to find that their practice, their experience is not enough. Our team is different than the several thousand developers out there. There's something else. Our team has special needs. We don't need daily. We don't need planning. We don't need grooming. And our team certainly doesn't have a retrospective because it's not necessary. We talk to each other and we don't need that. That's said. But let's summarize. When I start working with a new team, I always, uh, always see something like that. The Scrum Master has become, a, it is chosen from, uh, either for our, uh, from a leader or the, the manager or from Project, project manager that previously worked with these uh, software developers. And it happens that on the daily process, every day, those guys are referring, the, those, those guys are confessing only to the developer, to Scrum Master, what they did, reporting the progress and the status of the tasks they made uh, during the last, last day. They are not talking to each other. They are uh, they are uh, only just reporting the progress and the status. The main purpose of the existence of this uh, daily is to provide a coherent and fast knowledge sharing among team members. And this is the purpose of the daily. In Scrum Guide, it is even said that there is no need of Scrum Master and Product Owner on Scrum meetings, on daily Scrum meetings. Scrum Master uh, has to um, take care that the Scrum meeting is, uh, is present, but he has, uh, he has no need to be there. I've seen a lot of those. I've been one of those guys and I've seen a lot of, and I've uh, moved forward from myself from this position. There's always in one team, one developer with a huge experience, with several years of constantly focusing on development and so on. And this guy has become a hero. And he's taking the task and he probably 
is going to fail to share the knowledge among the other team members, making it not cross competence, making team depends on the, the one single person. And when this, when this person is missing, the Scrum falls apart. And we had a problem with this project, and we had a problem with knowledge sharing, and we had a problem with our team. Always I see also those last minute tasks. We, human, we tend to procrastinate. We tend to leave this hard task at the end of some mythical tomorrow. I will do it tomorrow. Today, I'm going to take care about this quick win. I'm going to take care about those uh, small uh, tasks that provides me with the bigger achievement and so on. But those tasks, those bigger tasks that we tend to leave on the last minute, we probably fail to deliver at the end of the day. And we tend to blame, for example, infrastructure guys, because they didn't give me permission on spot. I asked him and he told me he's not working in Scrum and he doesn't care. And I told my product owner, I failed this, I failed this uh, topic, I failed this task only because, you know, and there's a list of the people who was uh, against me during uh, this message. I'm agile, I don't do doc documentation. I work in Scrum and paperwork is completely uh, unnecessary. We tend to diminish role of the paperwork, and you know, I work for the government, so in my case, paperwork is pretty, uh, pretty important. But I work for several, uh, several dot coms, and I have to tell you that the documentation is a process, is a, is a document for others, also, and I can't see any problems with that. That we can use Scrum to create documentation, but this uh, creating documentation for our work should be part of the whole process of creating task. Have you heard something, uh, it's called uh, definition of done? Who heard that? Okay, definition of done is a document, it's a contract within a team and the product owner which specifies how the uh, how to solve uh, the task? How how uh, how to define a task is solved, and probably in those cases, it's very important to put. I have created documentation in this definition of done document. You know, you know why people tend to uh, say that they're agile and they're not doing documentation. This is Agile Manifesto. There's a one line. It says, working software over comprehensive uh, documentation. But people tend to forget about the last, one, the last line of the Agile Manifesto. It means we, doesn't, we do care about those stuff on the right, right side. We didn't diminish the role of that. But we put more effort on delivering those, uh, those things on the left side. And that's, import that's important. That's crucial. We do not forget about documentation. We do not forget about other things just because we have Scrum. People and interaction over processes and tools. We do not diminish processes and, and so on. I have met a lot of scrums. I've been on a very large number of uh, meetings where there was no time box, where people was sitting around and they are talking and have flame wars and they are thinking and pondering how to create, how to solve the, the question and so on. And when they run out of time, Oh, we cannot start the next one. We cannot start the sprint because we haven't talked about several more topics. And this is the role for the Scrum Master to guide the conversation, to make it more, to make it more, uh, uh, to make it more concrete, to make it more coherent. Because people tend to uh, say they are, they, they are proud of their uh, thoughts and they want to share. And within this sharing, it's very easy to, to create this flame wars. Whenever I get a question, why we should short our, shorten our sprint iteration from two weeks to one week? Now we have 
a whole one day planning for two weeks and then we will have this uh, very boring meeting every single week. That's very sad because the Scrum Guide perfectly define how much time you should uh, put in percentage uh, in ratio to the whole sprint length, how much time you should put on your sprint and so on. Uh, and planning, grooming and so on. Okay, this is the fa my favorite part of the Scrum. Retrospective. This is this is the most crucial part of the Scrum. A very different, a very forgot about most most Scrum teams uh, that I was start to work with. Retrospective is a place where the magic happens when we learn when we when we as uh, we are self conscious about our faults and where we try to f try to inspire when we try to perfect our job. This is the place where, when one people says we should, we could deliver more faster task if we create some build automation. This is a, for example, this is a, uh, this is a very small improvement, but in the uh, at the end of the day, it improves our workflow a lot. This is the place where you can focus on what doesn't work for you. For example, one team wants shorter, uh, shorter iteration. The other one, in opposite, it wants longer because the two weeks is, uh, two, because one week is too, uh, too long for them. And this is a place where this, the, this discussion could be, uh, could be held and it would result very, uh, very nice thing. Our team would be self, will be uh, self-learning and it's like a snowball, you know. Over the time we will be better and better in, for example, in a half year our team will be very good in teamwork. One of the most, uh, one of the most, uh, for, uh, for me, one of the most uh, diminished role is the estimation. Uh, people tend to estimate in hours. I prefer story points, but this is a discussion for uh, another time. However, people have uh, used the Fibonacci scales. I've seen uh, multiple mobile apps for planning poker. Uh, we've played planning roulette. Everybody in the team was, uh, you know, saying their number, and the leader says whatever he wants and puts this into J Jira and so on. And then we switch to small, medium, and large. Anybody could tell whether this issue is large or medium or maybe small. And when, we, when you, uh, when you um, divide your task into those three categories, in the end, you will receive very well, in the practice, it happens that you will receive very well divided task. And when you substitute, uh, for example, two, for example, um, four and eight as a large, you will receive a number in the end. You will receive a very precisely described sprint velocity. That is, you know, in my, in my practice, that is very accurate to predict uh, and very good for product owner to, to uh, learn. Uh, I've noticed a mistake. Uh, there's a problem with date. It's 2.014. Oh, I'm sorry for that. Okay, and the last one is epic stories. Um, epic stories is epic stories is a large problem. It's a huge problem because I've seen a lot of those uh, small tasks that happens over the week or two weeks or something like that, and we cannot predict how much time we have to spend uh, in order to to make them work, in order to make them uh, more, uh, in order to make them um, work and how to predict how much time we have to sacrifice to, to uh, deliver the, the value to the others. And, you know, when we simply divide those huge humong humongous tasks into smaller ones, this is the reason why we have grooming in our, uh, in our sprint iteration, when we divide those uh, when we divide those huge, oh, I'm sorry, uh, when we divide those huge stories into the smaller ones, we can precisely, we can very accurate measure, define, 
and estimate how much time would I require to complete this task. And with this knowledge, I can commit to the uh, product owner and I can deliver. This is the, the reason why we have grooming. Grooming is working on a backlog, it's splitting huge tasks into the smaller ones. Uh, in our team was, uh, when I was a software developer, uh, we had a role that whenever task hits to the large, co uh, large container, we split this uh, task into the smaller ones, for example, medium sized or, sm uh, or small sized. With this small task, we can uh, easily predict how much time I will require to uh, to do how much time I will require to do the task and to complete the sprint. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye.